Hello and welcome to a session of averages. Averages is nothing but how we represent a group. A group where there are people who have obtained different marks or have different values or anything that can be counted across. Let's have a look at how they are expressed. Now average is nothing but if we have say 10 people having 10 different marks. So we sum it up and divide by the total number of people. So sum of all the quantities under consideration divided by number of quantities. That is average. This is also called the arithmetic mean. So arithmetic mean which is again the same thing. Geometric mean is nothing but the median of the product of two numbers. Now product of two numbers A and B is AB. So root of AB will give me the geometric mean. Harmonic mean. Now this is nothing but the mean of the inverse of two numbers. Suppose the two numbers are A and B. So the inverse are 1 upon A and 1 upon B. So if we find out the average of 1 upon A and 1 upon B, it is nothing but A plus B divided by 2AB. Then we invert it back. So it becomes 2AB upon A plus B. This is the harmonic mean of A and B. Let's take some examples. Average cost of 5 apples in 4 mangoes is rupees 36. The average cost of 7 apples in 8 mangoes is rupees 48. Now what is the total cost of 24 apples in 24 mangoes? Now let's put it in formulas. 5A which is 5 apples plus 4 mangoes is equal to 36 is the average cost. So 36 multiplied by 9 which is 324. The second one 7A plus 8M is equal to 48 into 15 because 15 is the number. So it is 720. Now when we calculate both of them, it will be nothing but 12A plus 12M is equal to 1044. So for 24, it will be nothing but double, so 2088. Let's look at another example. A student finds the average of 10 two-digit positive integers. By mistake, the boy interchanges the digits of one number. Due to this, the average becomes 1.8 less than the previous one. What is the difference between the digits of the number? Now let's assume the two digit number. Let it be AB. So how do we write it mathematically? 10A plus B. Now let's reverse it. It becomes 10B plus A. So original number is 10A plus B and reversing it is 10B plus A. Now we know that there are 10 numbers. If the average drops by 1.8, then the total drops by how much? 10 into 1.8 which is 18. So the difference of 10A plus B and 10B plus A is nothing but 18. And we know that the original number was higher. So 10A plus B minus 18 will give me 10B plus A. Solving this, we will get A minus B equal to 2, which means that the difference of the two numbers is 2. And of course, the first number, with, when A comes first, A is higher. So A is 2 higher than B. Let's take another one. When a student weighing 45 kgs left a class, the average weight of the remaining 59 students increased by 200 grams. What is the average weight of remaining 59 students? So let's take 59 students. Let's assume their average to be A. So the total weight becomes how much? 59A. Now let's include the 45 kg fellow. So 49, 59A plus 45 becomes the new total. If we divide this by 60, Okay, if we divide this entire thing by 60, the average goes down by 200 grams. So A we assumed in kgs of course. So A minus 0.2 will be the new average. So 59A upon 59A plus 45 whole thing upon 60 will be equal to A minus 0.2. Solving this, we get A equal to 57. So this is where we get the, the new average of the class as 57. Let's look at another example. The max classes X, Y and Z take an algebra test. The average score in X is 83, in Y is 76 and in Z is 85. Now the average in X and Y when we put it together is 79 and in Y and Z when we put it together is 81. What is the overall average of the three classes? I don't know the number of students across the classes. So let's say X is the average of X class which is 83. So is y which is 76 and z which is 85. x and y together are 79. So if I say 83x which is 83 multiplied by the strength of x. Now this is a smaller x is e plus 76y is equal to 79x plus y. Now this is the total of the three two classes. So 83x is the total score of class x. 
76y is the total square of second class and 79x plus y is the total square of both the classes put together. Now, if we try to solve it, okay, there are two variables and there is only one equation, so we can't technically solve it completely, but we can get the ratios. So, x is to y is nothing but 3 is to 4. Similarly, for y and z, so 76y plus 85z is equal to 81y plus z. We get a ratio of y is to z equal to 4 is to 5. Now, we have a ratio of x is to y and y is to z and fortunately the middle number which is y here is also the same which is 4. So, we can have a continuous ratio of 3 is to 4 is to 5. Now, let us put it into the weighted average equation. So, 83 into 3 plus 76 into 4 plus 85 into 5 is equal to uh, divided by 3 plus 4 plus 5 gives us 81.5. So, this is the overall average of the three classes. Let us take a look at another topic partnership. Partnership is when two people come together to do a business or to take part in something, maybe something else completely. Now, what are the things which we have to keep in mind? Time is of essence. If two people are coming, are they coming for the same time duration? Someone's joining late, someone's left early, someone came intermittently. So, time is the essence. Second, they must be pulling in some resources. Normally, it is money. So, money is of essence or the resource is of essence. The third thing which is important is, in such cases, normally there is one person who is actually working, the other two, three may be just pooling in resources. So, that person who is working should be a working partner and others are normally called sleeping partners. So, the working partner typically will get more because he is working to get that money out. Let us take a look at some examples where we see this. A began a business with rupees 4200 and is joined by B afterwards. But B came in with 7200. When did B join if the profits at the end of the year are divided equally? Now, let us say A was in the business for a total time of X, B was there for total time of Y. So, 4200 into X equals 7200 into Y. Why so? Because they are actually splitting profits equally. So, 4200X equal to 7200Y. Finding the ratio, we get x is to y equal to 12 is to 7. Now, x is equal to 12, which means he was there for the entire year. And y was there for only 7 months. So, this is how we can find that y actually joined after 5 months and not from the beginning of the year. Let us take another look. A and B are partners in a business. A puts in rupees 5000, B puts in rupees 6000. A receives 12.5% of the profit for managing the business. Now, here the concept of working partners coming in. Let us continue with the question and the balance is divided in the ratio of the capitals. So, A is managing the business, so he gets something more for it and rest is according to their investments. So, if the total profit is 880 rupees, what is A's total share? Let us remove A's managing share here. So, 880 multiplied by 12.5%. Now, 12.5% is what? If we can recollect, it is 1 by 8. So, 1 by 8 into 880 will give me 110. So, removing this 110, we get now the proper, proper share, which is 770. Now, 770 has to be divided into two parts, which is 5000 and 6000. Reducing them, we get 5 is to 6. So, that is total of 11. So, putting that across, we get A's share to be 350 and B's share to be 420. So, the total share of A here is nothing but 350 plus 110, which is 460 rupees. So, this is how partnership and averages can be dealt with very easily.